I am really excited about this message that God has given me to share with God's people on today. The focus of today's message is, how do you respond to the challenges of life? I know the church has taught us to pretend as though we're excited about it, as the young people say, to fake and flage, but that's not consistent with scripture. What you're gonna discover in today's text, if you're really gonna be a follower of Christ, if you're gonna be Christ-like, that means that we have to deal with difficulty the same way Christ dealt with it. And what you're gonna discover is, Christ didn't lie about it, he didn't deny it. In fact, he admitted that he did not like it, but he came to a place where he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. That's today's message. I don't like it, but nevertheless, be challenged, be encouraged, be blessed by today's word. I want to begin this sermon by saying something that I know many of you all are going to struggle with. You're probably going to hear it with some degree of disbelief because even when I say it, I struggle to wrap my mind around it. But after 13 years of pastoring this church, I think it's finally time that I go public, go ahead and pull the cup that I've kept to myself for the last 13 years. Here it is. I really can't sing. I know, I know, I know. I know many of you all are shocked by that statement. And while I am not a great singer, however, I am a lover of music. And not just gospel music either. I love all genres of music. I like the blues. There's nothing like a lazy Saturday with Johnny Taylor. I wish I had somebody. Amen. I like R&B. Amen. I think I got some Luther in my office right now. I like jazz. Now, I ain't talking about that Kenny G stuff. I'm talking about Thelonious Monk and Charlie Berry Parker. I like Neo Soul, you know, Angelo, Gia Scott, and them type of folks, amen. I like reggae, amen. I like Ziggy Marley, Bob Marley, the Waver, you know, Buffalo Soldiers. I wish I had somebody. I like, amen, amen. I like old who, I like old school hip hop, you know, a hip, a hop, a hip, a hip, a hip, a hip, a hip, a hop, you know, yeah. that's right, you know, that's right, amen. I like the artist Snoop Lion, formerly known as Snoop Doggy Dog. I wish I had somebody, amen. I like all genres of music, amen. And, and as a kid growing up, like most of you all, I had one favorite group, amen. It was not New Kids on the Block. It was not new addition, although I could cut a step to Candy Girl. I wish I had somebody. But, but, but my favorite group, my favorite group was the Jackson Five. I wish I had somebody. Jackie, Tito, Jermaine, Marlon, and Michael. I did not mention Randy because he did not join the group until 1976 when the Jackson 5 left Motown and went to CBS and Barry Gordon told them they could no longer be the Jackson 5. So they had to be the Jacksons. Are y'all praying with me? You remember Jermaine didn't make the move with him because he was married to Barry Gordon's daughter so he felt obligated to stick with his wife. I wish I had somebody. Through it all, through it all, through it all, through it all, through it all. I stayed with Jackson 5. Even when they became the Jacksons, I, was, I didn't really like that song, Torture, you know, Victory 2 and all, but I stayed with the Jacksons. Are you hearing? I even stayed with Michael. Even after he forgot who he was and bleached everything, I stayed with him. Even to this day, I still like Michael's music. Amen. I remember, Brother Mac, when my mama brought me home the Thriller album, when Michael Jackson had the white suit on with the little baby cook. I put it on my wall as a poster. I wish I had somebody. Amen. 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 If I had a little more time, I'd sing a verse or two of PYT. I wish I had somebody. <laughs> but one of my all-time favorite Michael Jackson cuts was a song that he wrote in his later years called You Are Not Alone. The song is a wonderful ballad reminding somebody that was loved that the one who loved them was there no matter how they felt. Michael said, you are not alone. I am here with you. Though we're far apart, you're always in my heart. Then he says in another verse, you are not alone. I am here with you. Though you're far away, I am here to stay. You are not alone. 
And people of God, the song is a reminder of a few realities that I think all of us go through at some time in our lives. It deals with the reality of feeling alone. Everybody, somebody says everybody, everybody needs what one psychologist has called an essential person. That is a person you can be transparent with. That is somebody you can be yourself with. An essential person is one that before whom you can be naked and not ashamed. An essential person is one who will stand with you during your darkest moments and then not judge you. An essential person is one who is committed to check you, then turn around and cover you. An essential person person is someone who will allow you to be you even if they're not excited about the you that you're being. See, everybody needs an essential person, but here's the problem. Even after you find, even after you identify, and then you begin to, to utilize that person, essential as they are, they are still limited. Stick with me, I'm going somewhere. They are limited, you all, because they're not always available. Are y'all praying with me? They're limited because even while you can vent to them about your situation, Oftentimes, they're limited in their ability to change your situation. So the bottom line is you can have an essential person and still go through seasons of loneliness and being alone. Y'all, loneliness is a reality that all of us face at some point in our lives where we feel like nobody understands. And since nobody really understands, that means I really have no one that I can turn to. I read somewhere that the greatest punishment that you can inflict upon a person is not imprisonment because even in prison, you're around some other people. The greatest punishment that you can inflict upon a person is solitary confinement because in solitary confinement, there are no contacts and you can make no connections. Are y'all praying with me? It was the director, it was the director of the National, uh, National Prison Chaplains Association in writing his handbook for new chaplains who said that most suicides within the prison system happen within the first 15 minutes of lights out. Don't miss that now. Most suicides that happen in prison normally happen within the first 15 minutes of lights out because when everything goes out, when everything goes off, then you have to deal with the reality of your circumstance with no noise except for your own breathing. Y'all, the feeling of loneliness can be a powerful thing when you give it the authority that it does not deserve. Let me say that one more time. The feeling of loneliness can be a very powerful thing when you give it authority that it does not deserve. And you might as well be honest, we all know what it's like to be alone. And then sometimes we know what it's like to be lonely. Tell your neighbor they're not the same thing. See, we all know what it's like to be alone. It is sometimes you know what it is to be lonely, but you need to know they are not the same thing because everybody that is alone is not necessarily lonely. Talk back to me in this house. See, just because I don't have anybody doesn't mean that I can't enjoy my own company. I wish I had somebody. See, just because I'm not married doesn't mean that I'm desperate. Talk to me, single folk. Just because I don't have anybody to call on the telephone don't mean that I can't hold a conversation with myself. See, sometimes I just wake up in the morning and say, good morning, self. Look at you with your bad self. I wish I had somebody. See, just because, just because, just because, just because, just because you don't see me with somebody, don't be fooled into thinking I'm thirsty for a relationship. I wish I had somebody. See, just because you don't see me with somebody doesn't mean that I'm jumping on the first train that's pulling out the station. I wish I had somebody. I can be alone and not lonely. But by the same token, I can have company and still be lonely. See, just because you're with me doesn't necessarily mean that you're with me. See, just because I can see you doesn't necessarily mean you can feel me. Are you praying with me? See, you can have a whole bunch of folk around you and still feel like you ain't got nobody with you. You can be married and be lonely. You can have a friend and be lonely. You can be sitting up in the church sitting on a full pew and still feel lonely. And watch this now. And you have to figure out how to manage those seasons because when you don't manage seasons of loneliness, you can end up doing some things that make your situation worse. Talk to me in this house. You know, you can end up shopping and eating and sexting and texting and sexing 
and clubbing and smoking and drinking. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. That's why all the enemy really wants to do is get you alone because it's when you are alone that he begins to mess with your head. I wish I had somebody. You ain't got to take my word for it. You ain't got to take my word for it. All you got to do is read your Bible. Satan didn't mess with Jesus until he was in the wilderness alone. Are you hearing me? You see, he comes at you when you're by yourself in an effort to cause you to forfeit what God is making of you and to forfeit the place that God is taking you. This is why you must understand that even in the seasons when you think you're by yourself, in reality, if you're connected to God, you're never by yourself. You see, I'm convinced that that's one of the things that we have lost as believers, our, our ability to be honest about how we feel about our reality. Hmm? Didn't expect no amens there. I know you super spiritual saints can't relate to that, but there are few of us in here who know it's possible to get so stressed, to become so weary, to be so worn down that you simply want to quit. Quit, quit work, quit church, quit life. I mean, you don't even trust the people you're close to. And the only prayer you be, seem to be able to pray is, God, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how it came to this, but I need you to get me out. I wish I had somebody. Anybody ever came to a place that the only thing you can manage to pray is, God, get me out. Listen, I know you were blessed by that message. Here's my parting word for you today. I need you to purpose in your heart. You're no longer going to play the blues. You're no longer going to sing the blues. You understand that it's okay to say to God that there are some things you don't like. But what I need for you to do is to commit to growing as a Christian, maturing as a Christian, so that when you get through telling God I don't like it, you'll at least be able to say to God, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Until next week, know that I'm praying with you and praying for you. Grace and peace.